Brady Dick with the big shout out to his OGs. That's right, OG, OG Ananobi and your boy Scotty standing on business all night in San Antonio. And let's talk about it. When people talk about dynamic duels, they're usually talking about their offensive prowess. But if you look at the numbers, this is one of the best defensive pairings in the NBA. Probably the best. Can I, my brain works in different ways. Can okay. I go back to the last block and when... Ashley had me talking about the West. Shout out to the Phoenix Suns. Okay, enough Phoenix Suns talk. Okay, you, you um, got that on the record. Let's talk about the guys. <laughs> I, I I think that, uh, I mean, OG's always taken his defense seriously. Yeah. Uh, he was a guy that came into the league and had to stay on the court as a defender because when he got here, Kyle, DeMar, JV, those guys were a major part of the team. It's and they were how, bucket getters. How do I stay on the floor? Play defense. Become a catch-and-shoot corner guy. He's, he's like a 60% corner three shooter, you know, according to some of the numbers. Um, but Scotty's taken on a huge defensive responsibility as well. And it was interesting last week talking to, two weeks ago, the opener, yeah. uh, the Minnesota broadcast crew, a guy, Jim Peterson, who I've got a lot of respect for, played in the NBA, has been around the game for a long time, looked at Scotty and said, I love the kid because he can guard five positions. And when he takes it seriously, he is a guy that can guard five positions. We're looking at peak defense here in the NBA right now. I think the special thing about this duo is that they can do it on both sides of the ball. I think oftentimes when we hear about dynamic duos, like you mentioned, Clay and Steph before, it's like, yeah, they're shooters. Clay oh, has downhill. Clay can do a little defense. Steph, it's, eh, maybe it's not his forte, right? Well, ole. <laughs> but the two of them can do it both, and I think that is a rarity. Now that Scotty's shooting is coming along, now that OG, as you said, is absolutely cash from the corners, and, and he's moving that range out to exactly, the forty-five and a bit, and they can take it to the rack too. You have to respect them in so many facets of the game, and you don't. Don't want to see them staring you down, waiting for you at half court to try and give you heck on something. They're getting hands in lanes. They're disrupting. You mentioned it before. The guys in the NBA are going to make shots. Yeah. They're going to make shots with you up their left nostril. That's just the reality of it. Mm -hmm. But can you make their day at work a little bit more miserable? Yes. Do they have to worry about you when you're out there? Yes. And those two do that. And it's just as about as much as you can ask for from NBA defenders just based on the offensive skill available. I, I love the fact that Darko has his team playing hard defensively they're a top 10 defensive rated team uh and, and i don't know if that translates as much anymore because it used to be if you weren't in the top 10 defensively you couldn't win the championship i i just think the nba is kind of devalued defense yes uh but i like the fact that it's still being stressed in toronto and for a team that can be challenged sometimes offensively. It's old-fashioned thinking. Well, I'm not scoring. Well, heck, you ain't scoring either. Well, they're going to need that mentality as they go up against two of the best ISO players the game has ever seen. The Dallas Mavericks are the next opponent for your Toronto mm -hmm. Raptors on November 8th, 8.30. Another date in Texas. And you get to see Luka Doncic. We'll see you next week. Deuces! Deuces!